Welcome to Handmade, a series about artisans and craftsmen who use their creativity and skills to make unique works of art. I'm your host, Greg Downs. In our modern world, it seems like everything is mass-produced, pre-packaged, and available on Amazon. So it's easy to forget that some things are still made by hand. In this series, we'll be visiting the studios and workshops of woodworkers, weavers, stained glass makers, metal workers, quilters, and many more. Not only will you see these artisans at work, but you'll hear about their creative process and learn how they acquired the skills necessary to make their unique pieces of art. So come on, let's go visit the studio of today's featured artisan. In today's episode, we're visiting with Pam George, a fiber artist who specializes in art quilts. When most people think of quilts, a bedspread with a traditional geometric pattern comes to mind. However, within the quilting community, there's a small group of people that make quilt art. Rather than follow a pattern, these quilters develop their design from concepts and ideas. They experiment with colors, textures, and mixed media to create quilts that have more in common with fine art. When I was doing research for this project, I learned that a lot of art quilters sort of started out in other mediums before they migrated to art quilts. Was that the case with you? Yes, I was always a painter my whole life, uh, drawing and painting and creating. So painting is very much a part of my quilts now, and painting with thread. All through school, art was a very important part to me. It just makes me happy. And the art teachers, even in high school, got me out of study hall, and I took two art classes a day when I was in high school. In fact, I sewed clothing and things back before I moved here and got rid of all my fabric and things. And when I got here and went to the first Quilt Guild meeting and saw what the talent in this community, I really took off. My favorite subject is flowers and trees and nature. Nature, I just love and I love to do animals, dogs, and, and I do people. So my grandson I've done and my husband. Well, one of my first uh, was a uh, quilt of my husband at Mount Hood and, and Trillium Lake and it's a reflection, it's called Reflections. And it was done for a guild challenge and the quilt took first place and they take the top eight quilts and it goes to the AQS show. You obviously spend a lot of time sewing. What is it that you like about it so much? I don't know. It's just a piece. Sewing is a peaceful art to do, and there's so much that goes into it actually before I even sew these quilts. You told me a little bit before that one of your favorite subjects is grandchildren, and this <laughs> outstanding quilt of your grandson. Tell us a little bit about sort of the inspiration and how you work, came up with the design and some of the detail within the quilt. Often when I am shooting pictures, I know that that's the shot. You know, I'm going to make a quilt. Or I say that a lot too. There's a quilt when I see something. So I couldn't wait to get back and, and make this quilt of him. Uh, I did some fun things in it that were a little different. Like the mossy area here is a fi fabric solvy, it's called. And it's kind of a gelatinous type fabric. And I just sewed uh, free motion on it just to fill it all up with a textured thread and then you dissolve it in water and only your threads are left. So I attached some of those mosses to this for that outdoor look. And I chose the background fabric rather than doing trees and bushes and everything that was in the background. I just wanted to focus on him and his little John Deere hat. And so that turned out, I was really happy with it. Skin tones, I like to do them this way. They're not naturally like a real person's skin tone, but showing highlights and some definition there. So how do you go from a photograph to a full-size pattern? Well, I take my photograph and I blow it up, posterize it on my computer, tape the pieces together, or this I did at Kinko's, 
and um, turned it into the size quilt that I want it to be. And then I outlined the important parts for my pattern pieces. And then this is what I do off of this picture is I make an overlay. This is a plastic that you can buy at fabric stores. And um, I have drawn the important lines to me onto this so I know placement of eyes and nose and teeth and everything in detail so that you can get everything proportioned. And then I do uh, pattern pieces off of this where I'll lay my fabric and trace and then I will put it on fusible web and, and cut it out. Then I roll this up and I keep my fabric underneath here and I then I'm able to place the bill of the hat right underneath that bill because this is all taped down normally and then that's how I can get everything in proper placement. So a lot of this, uh, these pieces, little pieces here, they're all cut individually by right. hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I make my own patterns on freezer paper and I uh, fuse the back of colors of leaves that I want. As you can see there's just drawing on there now. And then I cut out all of my leaves to get just what I want. This one I decided to do a mandala type effect. So I fused these already and this one now I just peel the paper off. It's a very sticky background. It'll stick long enough for me to get all four of these down. Okay, that makes me happy. You just hot iron, fuse them down. In order to make the quilt sandwich, we call it, um, this is the top of the quilt, a quilt top or a runner. And this is the batting, that is the second layer. And this is underneath this layer. And then the backing can be the same fabric or I use prints or something else underneath. And so you've got the three layers to make a quilt. What we call a sit down long arm machine where you, people usually have these on big racks and they drive them for large quilts. But since I do smaller size quilts, I like to be able to push and draw with this needle. So basically that's what I'm doing. And you can put as many veins in a leaf as you want. That is your free motion quilting to get the details of the leaf, the thread painted um, aspect of it. Now I'm going to need to quilt the background of if this was a real quilt. The background now I'm going to do a free motion pattern called meandering. It's probably the simplest pattern that you can do for a background. have a bigger a real quill that doesn't pucker and stuff because it's all down but and I usually unpin as I'm going. But. What about this uh, quote of this large flower over here? This is a passion flower and this is actually the Tennessee State Wildflower and I did that for an AQS quilt show but this is painted so this this flower and the leaves and the curlicues were all painted on fabric by me in fabric paints called Peebo. So I got to paint just like a picture on a white fabric. And then when I was happy with it, I fused it to a um, fusible webbing on the back. And then I cut the entire thing out and then sewed it down to this. And then the, there's a lot of detail in this one in the... Uh, veining of the petals of the flower and the leaves and stamens and that. This is a real favorite of mine. I like this quilt a lot. This yellow quilt over here, you mentioned that it was in the staring stage. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, my quilts and my paintings are that way. Um, I have came up with this idea of kind of a butterfly wing under a microscope. And it's usually been hanging on my design wall so that I can look at it. All artists from their artwork have to, whatever your artwork is, I think you need to back away and stop. 
you need to look at it, see what it needs, where you might need lights and darks, and you know, and it comes to you. It's like the next day, yeah. Oh, come in with your coffee in the morning, and you know what you need to do. Uh, what about this vest here? Well, that's a jacket I did, and I uh, thread painted the um, pansies and fused my silks and that on the back. And then I went off and did um, roots underground. So I did the levels in the, quil in the uh, quilted jacket to look like earth and sky and the grass that the pansy's growing in. And then that's heavily thread painted also in uh, all the areas to give the, just to make the center of the flower look like a pansy. <laughs> when you start a project, uh, can you see the whole thing and it finished or does it sort of change as you work on it? It does evolve and I know when I I always finally reach that point when I know I'm done. I know that it, that was it. That's what I needed to do and it's finished. I developed my style fairly quickly after I met a national Susan Brubaker Knapp that came to speak at our guild. Uh, she was she changed everything for me um, because she painted her quilts. She uh, did things from photography, and um, I learned her uh, method, and I just I took off and went crazy. How is your personality reflected in your work? I don't know. I color <laughs> because I like to dress in bright colors too, I guess, and and uh, it just yeah, it's fabric is paint, and it's bright and I tend to work in in a lot of bright colors. Every artist encounters creative blocks. What do you do to overcome yours? That I have had creative blocks and I think that might be why I have a little rotation. I quilt, then I end up painting, then I end up needle felting. I'm just working in a circle all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what was the inspiration behind this piece? Well, I wanted to do a circus type elephant to use a lot of floral fabrics and um, fun fabrics that I could fussy cut out and use them for fringe and use the flowers from fabrics, uh, big prints and cut them out. So this is more of a collage quilt. Um, and I do love to do collage also. So um, I just would pick flowers and things that I thought would look neat for the headpiece and on the back. And uh, this all came from this drawing and I um, drew that and put it on the computer and uh, just to make a larger copy then so that I could start to make pattern pieces. And I've done three of these and they're all different. And this is what I come, came up with for my pattern piece. And so the elephant is separate from the bow and the back piece and the head piece. Uh, and all the decorative things, so I draw them on um, um, freezer paper so that I can work with and make patterns. And then when it's all finished, you come back and you put them all back together on the elephant. Right, and then they are, for muscles, for example, I will highlight with uh, fabrics and sew them down and, and show um, contrasting colors for shadows and um, and then it all gets thread painted to hold it, hold all the fabric down. It's a raw edge quilt. And here's the uh, the blanket on the elephant's mm -hmm. back. Yeah. You mentioned that you have some other quilts. I do. Can we go in the other room and have a look at it? Sure, them? let's do. So this is the quilt that's won all the awards. Yes, this is Fox in the Moonlight. I think this is probably one of my favorites. I, I really enjoyed making this. I love foxes. The whole fox is painted separately on fabric and then thread painted onto this background. And I've painted the rocks, the stones, the moon. And this is all a collage type setting where I just clipped out leaves and, and uh, sewed them down in the pine tree and the ferns, all these leaves. And uh, then everything gets thread painted, but there's a lot of thread in this, this little baby here. But that was a fun one to do, and he's, he's been good to me. Well, thank you for inviting us into your studio today. Your, your work is outstanding. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, it was a neat experience. I enjoyed it. Okay, thank you. Now that you've seen an art quilter at work, 
I hope you have a greater appreciation of the time and the skill it takes to make something by hand. It takes passion, practice, and time. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Handmade, and I'll see you next time.